How do you guys know each other? Um, you offered me a job once. I did, yeah. A long, very long time ago. It was a, to play a serial killer, in fact, wasn't it? A serial killer in denial, I think it was. Mark, Mark saw into my dark side for a very, yeah. uh, long time ago. You were... Um, yeah, I was a serial killer in denial. I chopped off bits of women's hair, I think. You did? And um, You were obvious casting, really, for that. I, I was. Yeah. And then we sort of picked up where we left off some years later. Then we did Trauma, which you were um, also a serial killer in denial, I think, in Trauma. I was a serial killer yeah. in denial. And, and fetish. I liked ants a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I had different killing techniques, I think. I, I just Putting spiders in mouths. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Obvious casting again, really. Uh, it was. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll, we'll pick up again <laughs> <laughs> for part three, the, the trilogy. But on a more serious note, Sintrinians. <laughs> yes. No, we've, we've overlapped uh, yeah. once again here. Um, we're here for, for different but actually yeah. strangely intersecting reasons. We're at this, I'm here to promote a film I haven't made yet yeah. uh, called Sintrinians, uh, which is fe features um, the... Uh, uh, Appalling spectacle of schoolgirls in very short skirts, yeah. fetishized uniforms, uh, who were on, on display last night at the uh, at the party. It's one of the, the more bizarre things about this market, really, is that you are selling uh, things which aren't uh, ready to be bought. That's right. Know? And it's, there's a sort uh, of um, slightly uncomfortable feeling sometimes of the serious against the frivolous. Having done sort of centrinians, then we're on to Mumia, right, which is sort of extremely serious. Film. It is, uh, well, my life at the moment this year, largely thanks to the, the Mamiya film and to you, is actually one of the most bizarre and confusing, um, kind of uh, almost unnatural hodgepodge of different things, yeah. really. I mean, yeah. I've gone from dealing with uh, Death Row in America yeah. to rehearsing uh, a, a, an ABBA song. Um, to oh, it's the actor's life, but it's uh, fantastic, isn't it? It is, and it's absolutely extraordinary. The film, yeah, the name of the film that we're working on together, while well, well, Colin's producing and I've been directing it, is In Prison My Whole Life. Well, In Prison My Whole Life, it's sort of based on a coincidence, I suppose. That's the, the premise is a coincidence because you and Livia met um, a guy called Will, who was 25 this year, and he was born on the night that Mumia Abu Jamal was arrested and then incarcerated in Philadelphia. So he physically kind of embodied this guy's life. Mumia Abu Jamal has been on death row for 25 years and Will is 25 years old. So yeah, Will, Will was born on the day that the killing happened. Yeah. That, uh, that uh, Officer Daniel Faulkner was shot by somebody uh, on William's birthday. So William, was, William is, uh, is, as you say, the incarnation of that time uh, spent yeah. uh, locked away. and. Uh, Mumia Abu Jamal was the man convicted of the crime, and the film looks at the, those 25 years from a lot of different angles. It looks at the, how the politics of the culture of America has progressed since then or changed. Yeah. And also, I think, you know, I think certainly our generation, I know I am a bit older than you, Colin, but our generation was, we were pretty infatuated by the American dream, really. I had one version of it, which came out in the 60s, right? All, I mean, especially with music. I mean, everything kind of led back to America. And I think Will's generation, being the next generation away, he was very influenced by hip hop and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But sort of was sort of wondering to himself, where did it all go? That kind of American spirit of rebellion and revolution. And well, what's interesting as that, well really. is that Mumia himself was a Black Panther journalist. Yeah. And he, in some ways, he represents a, 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 gen, a, a, a kind of an expression which stopped around the time he was locked up. Yeah, exactly. You know that very um, formal rhetoric, that voice, Precise that language. particular kind yeah. of protest, uh, which you hear from Angela Davis and uh, which you would hear from Martin Luther King and, and some of the, the people who represented the, the protest movement of African Americans in the 60s and 70s, you don't really hear that anymore. You know, the, the sound, the voices are different, you hear the, you know, it's, it's, it's rap, it's, it's movies. Also because it's through William's eyes, it's not, he, William is actually very, very open and so it's not a, uh, it, it, it's not a, a journey that's undertaken with a lot of presuppositions. That's right, yeah. Uh, or, it's uh, not a straight political interview, it's a very <clears throat> broad film actually, loads of music in it, right? Lots of music that, what I liked about the film actually was that it, it brought me to his music, so bands like The Roots and stuff I didn't know before and it's, 
even though I can make connections with older R&B and older soul and stuff, there was all this fantastic music that we've had in the film. And Absolutely. And massive attack to the score, for example, <clears throat> was kind of just bringing two, all these strands together. Well, Britain, it makes America, it very, two generations. Absolutely, yeah. And very dynamic to watch as well, yeah. because you, you're in... Uh, you're in Noam Chomsky's office in MIT one minute, and then you're 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 talking to Mos Def the next, and uh, <clears throat> you know the music of William's generation, generation yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Pleasure.